In this video, I'm going over everything you need to know about the NDQ ETF listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Hi everyone, and welcome to the series on exchange traded funds or ETF investing, where I look into specific ETFs and show everything you need to know about the product offering before buying shares in the fund. ETFs are personally my favorite way to passively invest as it takes the stress and worry out of stock market investing, which can be very volatile with wild price swings holding individual stocks. We will go over the ETF fact sheet, including the management fee, the index the ETF tracks, dividend yield, payment frequency, and the fund's performance. I will also go over the top 10 holdings in the fund, as these typically make up the largest portion of the weightings and resulting performance of the ETF overall. It is always crucial to understand what you actually own in these ETFs before buying them. If there's any ETFs you are interested in and would like me to make a video on, write it down in the comments section below. NDQ is an ETF provided by BetaShares, who own and operate the fund. BetaShares are the ones who actually own the underlying shares in the individual companies. So when we buy shares in the ETF, we buy from BetaShares, who continually issue new shares in an open-end fund, and not the individual companies inside the ETF. Now, NDQ aims to track the performance of the NASDAQ 100 index, before fees and expenses. The NASDAQ 100 index comprises 100 of the largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange in the USA, and includes many companies that are at the forefront of the new technological economy. Stick around to the end of the video where we'll go through how good the performance and returns of NDQ have been over time. To find the ETF in your brokerage account, you will need to type in the ticker code NDQ to bring up the options to buy or sell the shares in the fund. It pays distributions, which are the dividends from the ETF twice a year at a 12 month yield of 2.5% and has a management expense ratio, or MER, of 0.38% per year, and an expense ratio of 0.1% per year, which gives a total cost of 0.48% each year. So for every $10,000 invested, it will cost $48 per year in fees. And this isn't like a bill you have to pay immediately, it is automatically deducted from how much money you have invested in the ETF. So you never really notice anything being paid or taken out of your brokerage account. Now, since this ETF tracks the NASDAQ 100 index, there is no surprise that information technology and communication companies make up almost 70% of the fund, with very little weighting in the industrials and utility sector. There are no financial sector defined companies held in the fund, as this is one of the aims of the index. With its strong focus on technology, NDQ provides diversified exposure to a high growth potential sector that is underrepresented in the Australian share market. In one trade on the ASX, we can get access to companies like Apple, Amazon and Google that have changed the way we live. An important factor to consider when investing in ETFs that track overseas markets is currency risk. Many fund providers offer a hedged and unhedged version of their ETFs, which essentially means they hedge against currency fluctuations by taking out a contract called a forward foreign currency contract. Simply put, these are contracts where two parties agree to exchange currencies at a fixed rate at a date in the future regardless of what the actual foreign exchange rate does in the meantime. If exchange rates turn against you, the investment return will suffer and underperform the index the ETF tracks. On the flip side, if currency exchange rates turn in your favour, you actually get a slightly better return than the index. For example, if I buy one share of NDQ at $10 per share, and the index it tracks doesn't change, but the Aussie dollar weakens by 10% against the US, the share would now be worth 11 Australian dollars, so it helps in this case. However, if it goes the other way, where the Aussie dollar strengthens by 10% against the US dollar, then my one share would now be worth 9 Australian dollars, assuming the index stays the same value. Living in Australia, I always look for Australian domiciled ETFs, as it makes tax returns easier since I'm not technically investing overseas in the USA. Instead, I'm buying shares of the Australian-based fund that own the international stocks, so there is no need to complete any W8 Ben forms for Australian taxation purposes. If you're enjoying this style of video, feel free to give it a like to let me know and subscribe for more. When purchasing shares in an ETF, I like to have a basic understanding of the top 10 holdings, as these companies will have most of my money allocated to them and they will end up driving the bulk of the fund's performance over time. So we'll quickly go over which companies are in the ETF's top holdings and what they do to make money. Adobe is an American multinational computer software company headquartered in California. It has historically focused upon the creation of multimedia and creativity software products, with a more recent foray into digital marketing software. Adobe is best known for its Adobe Flash software ecosystem, Photoshop, Acrobat Reader, 
PDF documents, and Adobe Creative Cloud. And this is where it makes its money by selling these services as a subscription. Netflix is an American entertainment and production company headquartered in California. It was founded in 1997 by Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph in Scotts Valley, California. The company's primary business and way of making money is a subscription-based streaming service offering online streaming from a library of films and television series, including those produced in-house. PayPal is an American company operating an online payment system in the majority of countries that support online money transfers and also serves as an electronic alternative to traditional paper methods like checks and money orders. The company makes money operating as a payment processor for online vendors, auction sites and many other commercial uses. It charges a fee in exchange for benefits such as one-click transactions and password memory. NVIDIA is an American multinational company based in California. It makes money by designing and selling graphics processing units, or GPUs, for the gaming and professional markets, as well as system-on-a-chip units, or SOCs, for the mobile computing and automotive market. In addition to GPU manufacturing, NVIDIA provides parallel processing capabilities to researchers and scientists that allow them to efficiently run high-performance applications. It produces Tegra mobile processors for smartphones and tablets, as well as vehicle navigation and entertainment systems. Facebook is an American online social media and social networking service based in California. It was founded by Mark Zuckerberg along with fellow college students in 2004. Facebook sells ads on social media websites and mobile applications. Ad sales are the primary source of Facebook's revenue and it is experiencing increasing demand for advertising amid the shift to online commerce. Tesla is an American electric vehicle and clean energy company based in California. Tesla makes money selling its products, including electric cars, battery energy storage from home to grid scale, solar panels and solar roof tiles, along with related products and services. The purpose of Tesla is to help expedite the move to sustainable transport and energy, obtained through electric vehicles and solar power. Alphabet is an American multinational conglomerate headquartered in California. It was created through a restructuring of Google in 2015 and became the parent company of Google and several former Google subsidiaries. Alphabet leverages its search, web browsing, and mobile operating systems to make money through the sale of advertising, apps, subscriptions, hardware, licensing, and service fees. Advertising generates the majority of its revenue, with Google Cloud also growing very fast. Amazon is an American multinational technology company based in Washington. It makes money through its many business segments involved with e-commerce, cloud computing, digital streaming, and artificial intelligence. Amazon was founded by Jeff Bezos in Washington during 1994. The company started as an online marketplace for books, but expanded to sell electronics, software, video games, apparel, furniture, food, toys, and jewelry. Microsoft is an American multinational technology company with headquarters in Washington. It makes money by developing, manufacturing, licensing, and selling computer software, consumer electronics, personal computers, and related services. Its best-known software products are the Microsoft Windows line of operating systems, the Microsoft Office Suite, and the Internet Explorer and Edge web browsers. Its flagship hardware products are the Xbox video game consoles and the Microsoft Surface lineup of touchscreen personal computers. Apple is an American multinational technology company headquartered in California. It makes money by designing, developing, and selling consumer electronics, computer software, and online services. The company's hardware products include the iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, Apple TV, AirPods, and the HomePod speaker. Apple develops software to run on all their hardware, along with professional applications like Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, and Xcode. Its online services include the iTunes Store, iOS App Store, Apple Arcade, Music, TV, and iCloud. Now, ETFs are considered to be low-risk investments because they are low-cost and hold a basket of stocks or other securities, increasing their diversification. For most individual investors, ETFs represent an ideal type of asset which builds a diversified portfolio. Still, unique risks can arise from holding ETFs, as well as special considerations paid to taxation, depending on the type of ETF. Since inception, NDQ has had a cumulative return of 21.7% per year which includes all dividend payouts being reinvested. These returns are after management fees are taken out, plus assuming all dividends are reinvested, and does not take into account tax paid as an investor in the fund. Now, of course, past performance is no guarantee of future performance, 
but it's always a good sign of consistently improving business fundamentals, continually driving each individual stock higher within the ETF. I prefer to look at the cumulative returns as it includes the dividends paid to shareholders, which should always be included as we're getting some value back. Plus with the dividends reinvested, this is what provides the compounding effect, exponentially increasing our returns the longer we have our money in the fund. This is the sort of approach I take investing for the very long term using ETFs and one day live off the investment portfolio as passive income through either dividends or selling down small parts of the position, but maintaining the bulk of the capital. If you want to see how these companies make money in detail, watch the playlist shown in the end screen and let me know in the comments what you think of NDQ and whether you currently own any shares or plan to buy. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more stock market investing and interesting business news. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.